Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Okay, yeah, we're still here. <laughs> okay, before the poster session, we heard from the two uh, centers, and then we, we are going to hear now from the third born, and the fifth born, and the Okay, so, bon après-midi. Don't worry, I'm not going to speak in French, but Cameroon is a bilingual country, so we move from one to another. So I'm really happy to take you with me to revisit some of the fond memories of the first 10 years of Cameroon. I have uh, less images, but most of them speak to me and will uh, speak to you, I hope. For a center to exist in a country, there is a need of legal document. For the case of Cameroon, we sign an establishment agreement is planning to establish a center of excellence in our country to build the capacity of our scientific community. This mark of trust by a prestigious knowledge institution should not only consolidate our own trust in ourselves, but also spur our youth to show studies in the scientific and technical field in which they are naturally gifted. So this is this award from the president of Cameroon, announcing the creation of ENS. So we came in like a king, okay? Because of this, almost all the doors were open when we arrived in Cameroon, although it was very difficult to open them. Uh, Neil is not here. Maybe he will have said uh, more. Then uh, when we get legal authorization, we need to select where to go, when to establish in the country. The main condition for EMS was to be in a coastal city. And in Cameroon, there are mainly two which are developed, Limbe and Kribi. We prefer Limbe because it is in the English-speaking part of Cameroon, and most of international scientists, if not all, speak English. So we had less choice. What happened to my slide? Okay, <clears throat> then then when we select Limbe, then there was a need to select an academy director. I'm happy Neil is here now. And then I applied after being a Humboldt uh, Research Fellow. And then there came interview. Among the members of the panel, there were top three panel from Ames. There was Barry and Neil. I don't remember if Neil uh, could remember the question he asked me. <laughs> OK, Mama, what do you foresee as main challenge in that position? And the answer I gave you is to do at least better than what is being done in Cameroon. You know, when you establish an M center in a country, it depends on the culture of the country. Cameroon was not a desert in terms of math. It was quite advanced. So my first challenge was to compete in a positive manner with them. And I think we are doing that in a peaceful manner. <laughs> then we had to select the first batch, which was consists of 36 students from, uh, I think, 12 African countries and 12 females. And in this batch, there are two stories for you. 
The first is with this Tokpa Jame from Liberia. I was scrutinizing the files and realized that he has he had handwritten transcript from Liberia in 2013. I said this guy need to be given a chance. If you submit a handwritten transcript from a university in 2013, it means there is a lot to do. I pick him. It was fulfilling the condition. So I said, let's give him a chance. And currently, he has he graduated, working somewhere in the US, and uh, earning very well his life, I would say. The second story, these are two twins. These are twins. This is Joel Nkek and Jake Nkek. When I scrutinized the file, the one I wanted to take was Jake because he was fully qualified. And uh, there was one document missing in the file. So I kicked Joel out. Then I realized that there were so many similarities. They were born the same day. <laughs> they did primary school, secondary school, the same. Then I said, have to be more careful, mama. Then I checked the file, same parent. <laughs> I say, my God, if there are twins and they have been going into the same school, the same class, and now at Ames, you split them, you have destroyed the family. <laughs> then I look at the file and then call the mother, who happened to be my colleague at Ines, I didn't know, and ask her, can you send me the proof that uh, Joel has done a year four or five in higher education? She said right away. She sent it to me, and then Joel was qualified, and then this is how I select them. And I was really worried because I would have destroyed a family <laughs> to select one, leaving another. Then that the story on this picture. Then academic opening. When we got authorization, found a place in Limbe, uh, we had to open academically because Neil was preparing a more fancy opening, I will tell you shortly. And then the governor of Southwest came uh, to open the center. You can see Magdalena Erickson, Erickson who was the first uh, director of academic development. And came the fantastic official opening. Believe me, Ems came in Cameroon as uh, a real king. Cannot imagine an institution coming for opening uh, with two Nobel laureate. Klaus Flan Flitzen, that's Nobel laureate 1985. I think David Gross is somewhere, Nobel laureate 2004. And a film medalist, Cedric Villani, who is a film medalist uh, 2010. And then the opening was done by the Prime Minister of Cameroon with almost all the government members present. This was a big entry for Ems. Until now, we still benefit from this uh, organization. Thank you, Neil. And. Uh, this is the graduation of the first ever batch. That's the only image of graduation I will show because we are now used to graduation every year, so it's not a big topic for us now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can see the, the twin are somewhere here. And one of them is now a senior lecturer at the University of Boya, Jek, Nkek. And the uh, second must be in Paris, but completed his PhD. Okay, the fact about Ems Cameroon, basically, as I said, we were created in uh, 2013. We have hosted about over 140 world-class lecturers from more than 25 uh, countries. And we have trained 455 uh, students, and 37% uh, are female. 
And this is the average, global average of the EMS network. So we are very close to the average of the EMS network. And um, basically, we have a structural master program and a corporate education master program. Um, for some time, I think I have Germans in the room. We had a German researcher, Prof. Giselle Mofu, who was the first ever humble female German researcher. She worked with us in Limbe for about uh, two years, and there were some unrest in the area, and she got frightened and uh, resigned. So from there, we didn't have a Humboldt researcher, although the research activity continued with uh, the postdoc and student. But we will be having many shares, I will tell you, and then I will uh, continue discussion with my colleagues uh, from the Humboldt Foundation. If you want to summarize what we do, we have two master program, the structural one and the cooperative with some streams within the entrepreneurship program. Give back activity is very important for us because EMS is made of give back, I would say. Because this, this, the, the, the time Neil spent in East Africa impacted his view and finally brought him to the consortium of uh, EMS Network. We have the teacher's training program I will mention. And uh, this is an image of the opening of the teacher's training program by the Minister of Secondary Education in Cameroon. And uh, you know, teacher's training started in MSEC in a different way. Then we developed the concept for teacher's training in Cameroon, which is now replicated in Rwanda. And in Cameroon, we realize that we have a centralized system where there is one school training teachers, and then there is ministry, and there is one regulation to be split for all the country. No region, no uh, subdivision. So we said, if we really want to impact the teachers, we should go and impact the inspectors. So we went, worked together with the inspector, trained them to become master trainers, and then uh, colleagues from uh, South Africa, Sinobia, I know that Barry Barner, I don't know if he's here, they really support us in training the master trainers, and this is how we split our training to all the teachers, almost in Cameroon, and then the students. Now, uh, this is our legacy, our achievement for teachers training in Cameroon for all the 10 regions of Cameroon. And Cameroon is uh, two countries in one, English-speaking part, French-speaking part, and you have to be careful how you handle all of this. And we were able to train 2006. Uh, out of this, I think 850 are from English-speaking uh, part. And uh, one of the achievements of the teacher training program in Cameroon was the living together. Because in Cameroon we have bilingual school, which is basically are two schools in one. English part functioning independently and French part functioning independently. So when TTP came, we put together mathematics teacher from English speaking part of Cameroon and French speaking part of Cameroon and uh, to do math, to discuss about math and it works perfectly and it never happened before. And the uh, Another achievement is that we were able to influence the syllabus of mathematics in English speaking part of Cameroon. This was not possible because the trade union will automatically block that. But since we have been working with the inspectors, with the teachers, it was easy for us to say, let's look at the syllabus, there might be something to improve, and it really worked. And teachers' training was fully funded by MasterCard. I don't know if Evie is still in the room. Uh, and would like to thank, really, uh, the MasterCard Foundation. This is the certificate we were given to the trainees. 
what I want you to see here is the three signatories. This is me, the center president. This is the Minister of Secondary Education, and this is the Minister of Higher Education. For you to see the importance Cameroon government was really putting into the teacher's training program. If not, there is no way for a minister to spend his time signing certificate given to teachers. But we were signing all the three, and uh, this is something uh, fantastic. Now, some numbers. Ems Cameroon has trained 455 alumni out of uh, 3,200 from 29 countries. 37% are women, and about 70% are in Africa. We have a good track of our alumni. And uh, one of the way to see the power of our alumni is that uh, where is the direct, current director of South Africa? Is she around? Okay, the president is there. Three tutors out of eight, maybe, are M. Cameroon alumni. <laughs> it means you like what they do. <laughs> we are happy. And thank you for employing our product. <laughs> so, you see, um, in Cameroon, there is a sickness called PhD. <laughs> Almost any Cameroonian want to do a PhD, and this is terrible. Sometimes they find job in a private company, well paid, they will leave the job to go and do the PhD. So out of our 455 alumni, already 42 have completed the PhD, okay? And uh, there is 130, completing the PhD. One of them is Pakom, who is tutor, has been recruited tutor here in M South Africa. So we have a good track of our alumni and they are doing really well. <laughs> Thank you. Give back. Every Wednesday, two hours, so usually from three to five, all the M students have to volunteer for give back because this is how M was born. And we are really strongly demanding about that. It's not an option. You have to. You don't have money to give to the community. You have your time. You have your knowledge. So we educate them to avail themselves for the community and they like it because we know Ems is a give back from Neil and Neil family, and we really thank you for that. So we enforce this legacy, this tradition, because this is the way forward. Last October, the Ems Network president was in Cameroon to renew the agreement with Cameroon government. So he signed again establishment agreement with Minister of External Relations, and uh, the MOU with the Minister of uh, Higher Education. Every five years, we need to renew the agreement, and they need to say if they are satisfied with our service or not, and believe me, they are highly satisfied. The Minister of External Relations during the signing said that during all the meetings he has been attending in Africa, Africa Union, they speak about artificial intelligence, and they speak about data science. And he's so happy that in his country, there is already an institution well advanced in that uh, domain. That's another photo of the signature. You can see uh, some here. Minister of External Relations, Minister of Second Education, Ambassador of Senegal in Cameroon, Ambassador of Germany in Cameroon, Representative Ambassador of Canada, and the Ambassador of DRC. So EMS is also politics. <laughs> we involve government and we request support of government. And since they know what we do and they support what we do, when you invite them, they come. And they were really happy to come and attend this meeting and to provide all the support uh, they can. Sometimes for visa issue, they are very uh, useful and 
very soon for funding because we are planning to request funding from any African government because we are training their citizens. The land. The government of Cameroon gave us five hectares of land by the ocean. So we can build 10 M center. There will still be places. <laughs> and then the dream of the Ems Cameroon own center, because currently we are renting for 10 years. That's enough. And we plan to build uh, this center. And that was a long time ago, 2000, 2001. That was the planning phase. And then on June 2021, we clear the place to start the building. You can see here, this is just cleaning up for the building. And some months ago, does it work? <laughs> yes, three or four months ago, you can see uh, the building going up. I wanted to say my office, but, but, but the office of the center president is, <laughs> is somewhere here. <laughs> because the ocean is this way. So basically, that's four winds. And the capacity is for 200 students, three to four researchers, and uh, four classroom and one large lecture hall, I think bigger than this. You can see the roof part. The restaurant is here, and the big lecture hall is here. Yes, this week they have put zinc. They have covered this with the zinc. So but they didn't have time to change, to update the new images. And the structural wall is finished, and the plastering inside here and here is finished. You can see that this is already plastered. So gradually, they are working from inside. When they get outside, it's almost uh, finished. And it is a plan to move in before the new batch in uh, August. You can see here the roof. This is terrace roof, where uh, we will be doing this uh, uh, cooler too, right? Because this is one. <laughs> And uh, you, when you sit here, the ocean is here, and uh, it's 1,200 uh, square meters of uh, roof terrace, and there is a plan to have uh, a project on uh, a solar panel on top, so that we want to bring in uh, students from remote area who don't have electricity, train them in the use of solar panel, and let them go back with some equipment to go and enlight their school for science. That's the plan. And we have to look for funding, and we are pretty sure to get it. Now, it's easy to have a building. Like Ulrich told me this morning, you take six months for one year to renovate the building, but it takes many years to improve the academic uh, skills. So what will we do in the new building? I really want to give the floor to my academy director, Dr. Daniel Chetia, to tell us a little bit what he will do in the new building, moving from 60 students to 200 students. Daniel, please come and stand. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, now we are able to host 60 students. When we are moving to our new permanent site, we are planning to move from 60 to 200 students. And now we are training in climate science, data science, and fundamental mathematics. The idea here is to have these two masters. And inside those two masters, we will still have some additional stream to be able to put the student together because we know the development is coming from different, uh, those different components. 
And one major thing, at Ames, in general, we are recruiting at the master level. And most of the time, some very intelligent students do not have the chance to leave, to, to reach the master level. So we have this program of mathematic excellence and diversity, which is fully supported by the government of Cameroon for the moment. Our plan is to go at the GCE level or baccalaureate, select the best one per region and in the different country in the sub-region. Put them together, start working with them, and we are sure that when they reach bachelor or master, they are already excellent. So this is our plan when we move to the new center. Thank you very much. Okay, let us continue. You see, uh, in life, there are happy moments, and there are sometimes uh, sad moments. Um, this image was taken in 2000 during COVID. You see, we are two, but we had to protect ourselves so that no one gives COVID to another one. That was Marco Garuti. He has been academy director for Ems Cameroon from April 2017 till uh, July 28, 2021, the day he passed away. We completed the training, the graduation very well. He went for vacation in Spain, and there suddenly the wife just informed us that uh, Marco is uh, gone. But that was really an excellent uh, scientist, collaborator, and uh, we still uh, remember him. But this is life, and we were planning for the building together. And we were visiting the farm to ensure that no one come and build on it. So Marco uh, left suddenly, and we organized a ceremony for him, and it was very painful. But this is life. At some point, we have to depart. But life should continue for those who still have chance to continue. And uh, now, I want to speak about some happy moment. This is Walde Gabriel Asefa Walde Gerima. That's an Ethiopian uh, student from the first batch who completed the master with distinction and uh, wanted to do PhD. So we kept him in Limbe, registered him in Boya, and he spent four years with us tutoring, doing PhD, and then he completed his PhD. Then uh, in Cameroon, it was like normal Cameroonian, no issue. And then went came for postdoc in South Africa and then moved to Canada where he is assistant professor in uh, York University. This is a good example of Pan-Africanism. It was easy for him to utilize the tutor funding as a PhD, although he has to work twice because we pay tutors for tutor work, but we are happy to facilitate some time for him to do PhD. So Asefa is really a highly committed uh, alumni, alumnus. He supervised students. Every year he's donated to us about 1,000 US dollar. He would supervise students and say, no money, you keep, okay? And students are very happy to work with him because knowing Ames is an excellent supervisor and also creating a post Ames opportunity. We have a success story for most of our alumni. So if you visit this page, she did something I think only women are capable of uh, doing. The, a lady from uh, France working in Imperial College, London, came to teach uh, a course 
it was uh, algebraic geometry. And um, that was the first, that was 2015, I think. And uh, males in Cameroon are not so used to see strong female in math. So when she start her course, male together elaborate a set of questions by increasing order of uh, complexity and start asking her question. First question, she responded. Second question, she responded. Third, she responded, she said, Matt, elle est vraiment forte, hein? What they didn't know is that she did uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris. So, when you are graduated from that school, it means that in terms of pure math, you are highly connected. So, the connection with Pauline is that Pauline went to Anne Sophie and tell her, I like you as a person, but I don't like your research topic. But I want you to be my supervisor. <laughs> so Pauline was confused. She said, as a person, I like you. But what you do, I don't like. But I want you to be my supervisor in uh, um, conf uh, financial mathematics. She was confused for a day and two and came to me. I said, she asked to you. So it's your responsibility to respond to her. So she wrote back to her colleagues in the uh, UK and explained the situation. And the colleagues said, we will help you. So they arranged a topic. OK, give her. And she gave to uh, Pauline. And she supervised her in financial mathematics. She graduated got a scholarship in Belgium, I think, and then now she has completed her uh, PhD and she's working in KBC group. You see, I said only female are capable to cross such a border because I would never imagine going to a lecturer telling him, I like you as a person, but I don't like what you do. <laughs> but still, I want you to be uh, my supervisor in the domain, me, I want. So that's but she did it and it works. So, yeah. <laughs> this side. Ah, but still. Okay, now the last story before I close. This is Kelly. And this is the youngest Ems Cameroon graduate. <laughs> so uh, Kelly was uh, selected at Ems Cameroon when she was pregnant. She didn't mention that in the file. Maybe she was worried that we might not select her. So the time we started the class, she delivered, and she moved to Limbe with uh, a boy, two or three month, two month boy, and didn't inform us. She left that boy with a parent in a uh, in the quarter, but was living was living at Ems, but had to escape to go and breastfeed the baby and come. But since at Ames Cameroon we have a very strict rule in terms of presence of students, you don't do what you want in Cameroon, you do what the regulation authorizes you to do. So she was asking authorization to go home one, two, three times. The third time the tutor refused. No, there's no way. You are coming here to study. And she was confused. And she had to tell the truth that in fact, she had to resign because if she cannot go and breastfeed her baby, um, and then she was a little, feeling a little bit guilty to be the only girl with a baby disturbing her studies. So when uh, a female tutor, Natalie, came to me and explained the situation, so I asked Kelly to come. She came, I said, okay. 
I want to see the baby. He said, no. I said, I want to see the baby. That the, the basis of our discussion. Because I knew that she was a little bit ashamed to have a baby, so she didn't know what to do with. She went to the quarter and brought the baby. I got the baby, and I said, okay, sit down, wait for me. I left her in my office, and I walk in the class. And I stop the class and say, okay, listen, this is your baby. It's a baby of your classmate, Kelly. It's now your responsibility to do everything possible for Kelly to graduate. You take care of her, you take care of the baby. So I gave the baby to the delegate, and the baby went on to all the 50 uh, students. And I came back to the office and said, Kelly, OK, your baby is your classmate in class. She went in class. After the class, she came to me. I said, OK, I'm ready to support you. We can rent a studio in the city. You can bring in, we can pay for you a babysitter, and then so that you can be taking care of uh, your baby. And she said, we can give you more money. She said she needs no support. I have solved her problem. Her problem was psychological. She didn't know how to introduce to the classmate that she has a baby. Why did it? And then she completed and graduated. And the day of graduation, we prepare a robe. You see, that boy is wearing a robe. And she came with uh, a robe. And it went well. And this is really um, a time to thank Ems for training not only the student but the workers. Because me has been so much trained in gender to be gender sensitive, so that when such situation happen and naturally handle it with a different view. If I would be the former mama professor in a call normal, maybe I would have asked her to go away. <laughs> but with Ems, we are gender sensitive. So we do. <clears throat> it's our responsibility to support the lady, the, the female, until they succeed. Once they are at Ems, the baby should not be a blockage. We have means, and we put that means at their disposal. The last slide. is people with whom I'm working. You know you cannot do that work alone. This is a team of, uh, I think, 15 persons. Myself, Honoré, the COO, Daniel, the academy director. And we have uh, only four females, but very strong females. We are still looking for other females, don't worry. <laughs> so, um, for example, there's one position open. I'm not feeling it because I've not yet found a strong female uh, I need. So we will not get 50% like Ulrich, but we are aiming at at least 40%. So um, I really want to thank first MasterCard for providing uh, strong support to our TTP project and also to our, our program. Uh, that's one of the top funders of AIMS, I must say. Even currently, uh, Sam is waiting to hear from MasterCard, not only for AIMS Cameroon, but for the whole AIMS network. Really, thank you. And uh, there are other uh, funders, not to mention all, the Humboldt Foundation, the Federal Ministry of Science and Education, Google. Hey, where is DeepMind? Ulrich, you send me the logo of Deadman I add, because we have to acknowledge that they let you come, right? With some support. So really, I um, would like to say thank you to all those who have been supporting uh, EMS, all the African government, all the funders, all the donors, and big thanks to MasterCard and the Humboldt Foundation who are attending this uh, ceremony. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Professor Mama. As I mentioned, Siakula is not just an academic gathering. It's a platform for those untold stories. A stories of young people who are succeeding against the odd and become the beacon of hope for many young Africans uh, on the continent. So without wasting time, so we are left with uh, Ames Ghana and Ames Soranda, the lat latest born. <laughs> Thank you, Ames Ghana, over to you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, okay. Please, can I have the video first? of Africa, beneath the vast expanse of the Ghanaian sky, a community of brilliant minds flourished. <laughs> the air was filled with the whispers of wisdom passed down through generations, tales of remarkable African mathematicians who graced the landscape with their intellectual prowess. These mathematicians, who were known as masters of problem solving and geometry, carved a legacy that laid the very foundation of mathematical thinking. Their minds, as sharp as the edge of a sword, navigated the intricacies of numbers and shapes, revealing patterns in the fabric of the universe itself. Completing her undergraduate studies in mathematics and economics, Ama discovers that the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences in Ghana could provide her with a unique master's scholarship to pursue higher learning in the mathematical sciences field. And through this opportunity, Ama is exposed to a rich network of scholars, giving her the chance to pursue and complete a PhD. young men and women have reaped the rewards of the Ames Ghana training and are giving back to the society through impactful outreach activities such as the Girls in Mathematical Sciences program, GMSP. Being selected for the Ames Girls in Mathematical Sciences program has really exposed me to a broader field of analytical reasoning. Through their masterclass sessions online, I had the privilege to learn some aspects of mathematics more into detail, thus enabling me to better my understanding about the concepts of mathematics. In these sessions, we had lecturers from universities in Ghana and abroad taking us through various topics. My journey being in the AIMS Girls in Mathematical Science program has been really challenging, exciting, Fun. It's been all sorts of things, and most importantly, I've made a second family here. The Ames Girls in Mathematical Sciences program has had a major impact on me and my colleagues, of which I can say that it has boosted our confidence, it has made us think more highly of ourselves, and it has made us dream more bigger than before, because I'll say when we came for our one-week residential, we all had this minor minor thoughts on what we wanted to be but now i can say through that whole nine months journey we all have bigger dreams now and we are all working hard to make it possible the gmsp 
has now produced over 75 students since its inception, with 80% of our alumni pursuing STEM programs at the undergraduate level. Ames Ghana boasts of a more than 24-hour learning environment, offering a regular MSc in mathematical sciences as well as a specialized MSc in Mathematical Sciences for Teachers, MMST. The MMST is a two-year hybrid training that expands the knowledge of teachers in mathematical foundation and the application of modern mathematics techniques to improve the learning experience of high school students. Our research areas include quantum algebra and computing, stochastic and mathematical biology. Currently in our 12 year, Ames Ghana can boast of over 500 alumni contributing their quotas in governance, industry, academia, while participating in impactful outreach activities. My experience at AIMS so far has been great and wonderful. AIMS has shaped me to become a problem solver and a critical thinker. Here at AIMS, it is a 24-hour learning environment and you have the opportunity to research or something that you really like. Once you put your passion on it, you are able, and with the support of tutors and lecturers, you are able to deliver something authentic, something original. And that is actually what AIMS is about, delivering clean, proper work. So building on my MS, and the ESMT scholarship. I hope to use my own field to research in the field of stochastic analysis. Stochastic analysis is, let's say, a mathematical way of modeling, let's say, stock prices in the market. So I'm actually currently researching on that field that we call optimal control theory. So with a concept like this, I am able to use the mathematical part of it in order to model stock exchanges in the company or maybe model the dynamic of interest rate in the market. So that is basically what I am doing with my work in stochastic analysis. At AIMS here, they don't joke. If you are here and you're playing, you will not make it. So here at AIMS, once you come, you must have the mindset of a winner. Once you have the mindset of a winner, you are ready to put that pressure on yourself in order to work hard enough to produce good results. So this is basically what AIMS is all about, hard work and persistence. To do this is to create an environment that will stimulate and supercharge young Africans on the continent the next big technological advancement, the next big company that will impact and revolutionize uh, the continent of Africa and the world will be led by Africa. The future of mathematical sciences in Africa is bright and AIMS Ghana is poised to make a strong impact. Thank you very much. I'd like to say thank you to our communications team, Rhoda and Charlene. They turned me into an actress for this. We, we went through a lot for this. There was, we got into a sandstorm when we were coming back. We couldn't see on the road for a while, but I believe it was worth it. This documentary starred me, but it isn't all about me. It isn't always about my story. So I am an Ames Anuminos, and I have some of my colleagues here from the 2014 year group. I have Owusu here. Owusu, can you give us a wave? And I have Edward here. Yes, Edward is here. So I'll talk a bit about my story, then afterwards I'll transition into our presentation. So growing up, I loved mathematics, and I was good at it. But as a young girl, there were not programs which were structured for someone who had interest in mathematics. So I went to the University of Ghana, and I don't know if Prince is here. Um, I was an undergrad, he taught me vectors and geometry. And I remember when I walked into the lecture hall, the usual thing was that university lecturers in mathematics were very old professors, right? And this was, there was this young man talking about vectors. I was all confused and I was wondering, okay, will I really fit here? Yes, I survived. I went through my four years, graduated from the University of Ghana. But I still wasn't sure what to do next. Then AIMS um, had just opened in Ghana. Then Prince once told me, okay, 
you can apply to Ames and see what it, it offers. I grew up in Accra, which is the city, the capital of, um, of, 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 um, of Ghana. Um, of course, when you hear Accra, you think that it's all flashy, but I grew up in a very um, deprived area in Islam. And growing up, for me, I saw a lot of social vices, so I had a belief that I could change the world using education. So for me, my focus was, okay, if Ames is a place where I could study, it could be a, a, a game changer for me. So I went to Ames, and it was my first time out of Accra. I did my undergrad, my secondary, my university education in Accra. And I remember the first day we went to Ames. I was a bit sad because it was at the outskirts of the city, right? Um, on a hill, right, far away from everything. All you could do was mathematics. And for me, it was more about discovering what my interest was. And I'll talk about this throughout some of the mentors I've met. So at Ames, we went through courses, but one lecturer who really um, had an impact was Uli. So Uli came to teach algebra. And anyone who knows me knows I like, I love algebra, I love doing abstract things. And when he came, he sparked so much interest in math and me. And with the Ames environment, the lecturers live with us. So, at 6 a.m., Uli will come to his office trying to prepare his lecture notes. I'll be there, okay? Trying to understand the previous lectures. After lectures, you have tutorials. I'll be the only one who show up and I'll be asking lots of questions. And for me, I saw Ames as a place where I discovered myself, my interest in mathematics. From Ames, I still didn't know what to do next. And this same Uli told me about ICTP. So ICTP has these one-year postgraduate diploma programs, which he said, okay, maybe you can go there for a year and think more about what you want to do next. So I went to Trieste. We say Ames is difficult, but there's always one step higher, right? So I went, I got it from Ames top students. So I went to ICTP, of course, another challenge, right? But I graduated also from ICTP. And at ICTP, I was thinking, what next? I realized, okay, Maybe mathematics is something that I could do. So the same Uli came. Okay, you want to study in the UK, but there are very few opportunities for you to get funding for tuition and for your living um, expenses. But he had found this student from Kenya at the University of Glasgow at the Department of Science and um, um, Statistics and Mathematics who had gotten a, a fellowship from the Shlumberger Foundation so I could apply for it. And I'm someone who's been involved in community outreach, supporting women and girls, and Shalom Beje supports women in STEM from developing countries to study at top universities abroad. But the goal is that you gain all this training abroad, you bring it back to your home country, and you support the development of, um, of STEM courses. So I applied to the Shalom Beje Foundation, and wow, the day I got the, the email that had been selected, I knew it was a dream come through. So I went to the University of Glasgow, and. I had a total education there, not just the mathematics, but then I was engaged in science communication, which uh, Rejoice talked about. I competed in science now for <laughs> the first time for the School of Mathematics. I got selected to represent the university at the European Science Lamp final. So I was doing a lot of these community outreach, working with young people from secondary schools. Then PhD finished, I graduated. What next? Coming back to Ghana. Now, when I came back to Ghana, Ames wasn't somewhere I was thinking to go to. And that's where Prince comes in, right? The first time he asked me to apply to Ames, right? Now the second time too, he said, okay, Angie, you're back. Yeah, maybe you can come here and help us to do things. So I got to Ames as a postdoc, and we were thinking of ways of also growing mass. Now we, at Ames, we pick students from the master's level. But at that point, people have already decided what they want to do. Can we think of affecting students from a more junior level, like the senior high schools? So we designed, um, we wrote this proposal together with Prince and Adbate, which we submitted to our government for the girls in mathematical science program, which for us, we wanted to create this pipeline of girls who had interest in mathematics. Imagine a secondary school girl going through the level of maths that we do at Ames living in this 24-hour learning environment, going through coding. They are super charged to, to do a lot, and you saw two of our girls speaking. So we, we started a girls in mathematical sciences program, which I'll talk about briefly, and I'm, I'm so glad to see how this has grown, right? Siakula, it has grown. 
So these are two things I'm involved in. At, so currently at Ames Ghana, I'm academic manager for the girls program, but I also manage our teachers program. In Ghana, we have a lot of problems with students failing their senior high school um, exams in mathematics, right? And we're looking at ways of bringing that gap. We always talk about how bad teachers are, but what are we doing to, to solve that problem? So at Ames Ghana, we have also the Masters for Teachers program, which is mainly online, which I'll be speaking about here. But um, before I go to the slides, um, I'll, I'll talk a bit about um, support systems, right? We are in Africa, and there's this saying that it takes a village to, to raise a child, right? You see me here now, I'm not here all because and a lot of mass, but what is taking about a lot of support systems. It's taking mentors. It's even taking what a mentor like Prince to give me the stage to, to grace it. I remember when I was coming to the stage, Vicky was saying, we've had a lot of male speakers. It's refreshing to have young people coming here. And it's important we highlight that. We don't see that a lot, right? In our traditional universities, how many of our lecturers mentor young people, give them opportunities? for them to develop their skills. This is something I would like us to take back. How are we giving opportunities to our young ones to be able to what, discover themselves and to, to grow their talents? So, um, yes, yeah, so I'll go to our, our slides. Um, yeah, I hope I'm able to <laughs> navigate this. Yeah, so I'll skip a lot of things because most of our, um, our speakers have talked about it. So um, I'll talk about the master's program for teachers. Now in Ghana, teachers teach from morning till about 2 or 3 p.m. And if you want them to enroll in a full-time program to upgrade themselves, it will be a challenge. So we started this program, the MMST, where we teach to, um, our uh, teachers, high school teachers after school. So from 4 to 6 p.m. every day um, during term time online, they take one course per block. And over a two-year period, they'll be able to what? and a master's degree in mathematics. And the goal of this is that if you have a teacher in high school who understands the whys of the math they are teaching, they are not just throwing it at the, the students that just take it, this, that's it, but they understand how we derive our formulas, how we derive these things, it will affect the level of teaching. So we started this in November 2020. We've graduated our first cohort, our second cohort will be graduating very soon. And our goal is that we want to train what cutting edge teachers who will be teaching students to understand mathematics. Very, because very often we just chew and pour mathematics, but at Ames you, you can't chew and pour, right? You learn to understand things. Yes, so this statistics has already been shared. And yeah, this was a very big milestone for Ames Ghana. Where we graduated our first MMST graduates, our teachers graduates, and our regular master's students. Together we had 100 MSc graduates in the mathematical sciences. I believe it's unprecedented and it was a big milestone for us. <laughs> yes, alumni. I mentioned that some of our alumni are here. Obusu is here, Edward is here, the gods. Strangely, when we're coming to Cape Town for this uh, conference, we were running, um, I'm sure some of you know of the issues of internet we had in Ghana, right? And on Thursday, Friday, we couldn't have access to the internet, so it affected our flights. So we almost missed our connecting flights here. So we were running, Charlene, <laughs> Rhoda, and myself. Someone was calling me, Angela, Angela. I looked and it was the goats, right? The goats was in my year group. It was someone who came as a refugee, right? But he had this passion, passion what, to use his education, what, to change his society. And now what, he's back doing research, cutting edge research, using the knowledge and skills that he has gotten. And there are many more of our stories which you can find on, on, our, um, on our website. Where we have gained knowledge, coming from whatever background we have, we have gained our skills and knowledge in mathematics, and we have given back to our society through our teaching or our research. Okay, yes, and the girls in mathematical sciences program, how does it work? Now in Ghana, most of our secondary schools are boarding, right? And we don't want to disrupt the, the normal teaching curricula. But on weekends, students have time. So we're thinking, okay, on one Saturday every month, can we have an international scientist giving a two hour masterclass about their research? So that these girls will see that mass goes beyond 
the dy dx that we do the integration that we do but there's mass all around us today there's been lots of talk about ai there's been lots of talk about um, um epidemiology and all that if a young girl in secondary school sees all these then they'll be able to dream and choose to study mathematics at the undergraduate studies um, annabella who came in the in the video she came into the program not thinking she would pursue a degree in mathematics but now she's chosen to study mathematics. But we also give them mentors, which is something that we don't get introduced to at a very young age. Imagine in secondary school, you've been assigned an outstanding woman in STEM as your career mentor, who is going to guide you in your university applications, in your, um, your personal essays, everything that tends into, um, to guide you on your career. I believe it will help you to make a good decision in terms of where you want to go. So for our girls, we give each of them a mentor. And these are volunteers from all across the world. So if you are here and you'd like to be a mentor for our program, I'm happy to speak with you. So these mentors meet our girls online to have discussions with them. And when they're on vacation from school, they come to our center. So imagine waking up in the morning and you come to Ames and you are going through the level of maths that we are going to. I remember Prince taught a course in, in quantum theory, and the girls will come for, I was assisting in terms of tutorials, and Prince told them, the vectors that your master's students are doing across the room, that's the same vectors you are doing for this, this secondary school. So imagine, so these girls are very passionate, right? Imagine you teaching them, I teach, I usually teach vector, um, linear algebra, right? Imagine teaching master's linear algebra to high school students who are really talented in mathematics. It will really propel them to, to do more. And um, we also go for industrial visits for them to see where mathematics is, is being applied. In our first year, we had 120 applications from 12 regions of Ghana. We selected 35. In our second year, which statistically is here, we had 600 applications from 15 regions of Ghana, which we selected 40. In our third year, we had about thousand applications from all regions of Ghana. And it's amazing, when, when you go through the, the applications, you see students, irrespective of the grade of their school, whether it's a grade A school, grade B school, they are interested in mathematics. And it's something that we are thinking of growing beyond Ghana, because most of the lectures we have is online. This year, for instance, we had challenges with funding, so we are doing the program completely online online master classes, the mentoring, we are not going to have a residential component, but is this something that we could replicate across Africa so that girls, irrespective of where they are, can have access to this um, cutting edge um, mathematics and so that in the next few years, they will be the ones who will be what, leading in research and innovation in the mathematical sciences. Yes, so here's a picture of us during our 10th anniversary. So Ames Ghana is more than 10 years old and for our anniversary, we had Jocelyn, giving us a talk, Neil was there, and these are our girls who are super excited to meet someone whose work had won a Nobel Prize. And this, the picture on the left is a, a picture of our graduation. Um, so the girls also go through the problem solving course. Imagine mathematical problem solving at that level. Yeah, another unique program we have at Ames Ghana is the Star Africa program, where we are looking at helping students to incubate their ideas, to pitch them for funding, so that it's not everyone who has to end up in academia, if anyone has a brilliant idea which is going to solve our problems. So this is um, together with the University of Koblenz, and which, which is in its third year of implementation with Ames Ghana. Yeah, so research has Ames. So we have research in algebra and quantum. Um, so my research area is in algebra, which is very abstract. Um, Praise that's quantum, but we also have mathematical biology. We have a research chair here, Nick. Nick is here. And we also have a research chair in stochastic analysis. Yes, Olivia is also here with their PhD students. Yes. I'm sure there's a session where they are going to talk in, talk in detail about their research. Quantum Leap Africa. Neil talked about it briefly in his, in his talk, right? How Africa is going to to lead um, in, 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 in the next um, revolution. Um, yes, so just the last slide, something for us to think about. 
the 21st century university and capacity building. So this something Prince. So this is Prince's slide. So <laughs> if you have any questions about this, so can you direct it to him? So imagine a university where the environment is similar to what we have in our master's program, where you have lecturers coming from what top universities abroad, you having that 24 hour learning environment, you selecting the, the best students, right? And giving them what the best to, to be able to succeed. Is this something that we could replicate? I heard from Mamas um, talk about they, uh, Ames Cameroon, thinking of starting an undergraduate program. Is this something that we could also start? So that from that basic level, they'll be able to be exposed to that high level of, um, of, of, of teaching that um, our master's um, programs do. It's something we are also thinking about as Ames Ghana. Right? Because at the master's level, yes, it's good, but can we also go a step lower and train them right from there with this level of um, education that we have here. And I guess I will end here. Um, yeah, thank you for your audience. Angela. So we have our last born, Ames Rwanda Research Center, and I would like to call uh, Dr. Isambi. Thank you. <laughs> you know, being a last born is good, yeah? <laughs> Even you'll be the last one in the presentation. So first of all, I would like to thank Ames South Africa for organizing this uh, nice uh, event, but also thanks to the management that start with the AIMS uh, uh, network president and the AIMS center president and so on. As a baby, we have structured our presentation into two parts. So the first part is a video which has 19 minutes, and then the last part, just the normal presentation, that will take us uh, only five minutes. Please, can we start with the video? Thank you. In the annals of history, Africa has always been a ferocious of ingenuity and innovation. Long before the modern era, Africans were pioneers in shaping the world's scientific landscape. Dating back thousands of years, the Ishango born serves as a testament to Africa's mathematical prowess. It is evident that Africans were not only counting, but were pioneers in the development of mathematics. Around 2,000 years ago, in what is known as Tanzania, the higher people were masters of metallurgy. They crafted steel using techniques far ahead of their time, surpassing even European advancements. Their methods would later be adopted by Europeans, shaping the course of history. But Africa's journey to scientific and technological prominence was fraught with challenges. The scourge of slavery and the shackles of colonialism tore apart Africa's progress leaving scars that lingered for centuries. Yet, from the ashes of adversity, a new dawn emerges. Today, Africa is experiencing a resurgence in scientific and technological endeavors. We continue our African journey, drawing upon our rich heritage, forging ahead with determination and resilience. The story of Africa is not just one of the past, but of a future brimming with promise and possibility. Leading this charge is the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, AIMS. Founded in 2003, AIMS serves as a beacon of hope for Africa's scientific renaissance. In July 2023, Ames unveiled a significant milestone, the Ames Research and Innovation Center, which symbolizes Africa's renewed commitment to innovative scientific research and technological progress. 
Located in the heart of Kigali, right above the Nyarutarama Golf Course in Kachiru, the AIDS Research and Innovation Center is a melting pot of diversity and ingenuity, with a total size that transcends mere physical dimensions. Within its walls, a diverse array of talented individuals converge, including staff, researchers, and students with women constituting 44% among staff, close to 30% researchers, and 42% students. Notably, these women play pivotal roles in shaping the center's vision and achievements. From pioneering research endeavors and innovative projects to managing the smooth running of the center, these women exemplify the spirit of resilience and determination. For example, as a manager for scientific programs at the center, I'm actively involved in partnership building with both industry and academia. Additionally, I play a key role in resource mobilization and I oversee the administrative and operational management of the doctoral training programs. At Ames Rick, research transcends disciplines, pushing the boundaries of scientific exploration, from cutting edge discoveries in mathematics to groundbreaking innovations in technology. But it is more than just a research institution. It's a nurturing ground for the next generation of Africa's leaders in research and innovation. Through comprehensive capacity building programs, Ames RIC equips young minds with the skills and knowledge they need to thrive in a rapidly evolving world. Students and researchers at Ames RIC are empowered to unleash their full potential and become catalysts for change. Ames RIC's impact extends far beyond academia, bridging the gap between science and industry through innovative R&D initiatives. By connecting scientific breakthroughs to real-world applications, the center plays a pivotal role in shaping Africa's future prosperity with a vision that transcends borders and a mission that knows no limits. Our research focuses on three interrelated areas, that is, data science, quantum science, and mathematical modeling. One of our major focus areas is data science, including sustainable artificial intelligence. The industrial revolutions of the past have left a significant toll on the environment, with biodiversity loss, depletion of water resources, and increased greenhouse gas emissions threatening our planet's survival. Today, AI holds the promise of another revolution, both industrially and socially. However, current AI developments often rely on environmentally unsustainable approaches such as generative AI based on deep learning. For instance, the training of models like ChatGPT3 reportedly requires massive amounts of clean water for cooling computational hardware, posing a threat to global freshwater supplies. This raises crucial questions. Should we continue to prioritize the generation of visually stunning images and videos at such an environmental cost? At Ames, we believe there is a better way forward. We are committed to developing AI solutions that benefit humanity while ensuring harmony with the environment, drawing inspiration from Africa's millennia-long tradition of living in balance with nature. Another significant research focus of our center lies in quantum science, a field poised to revolutionize computing and information science. Our aim is to position Africa to harness the vast benefits offered by the impending quantum revolutions. At Ames RIC, we have established a dedicated research chair in quantum science and support several junior scientists whose work centers on quantum exploration. The third research focus of our center is mathematical modeling, where Ames has made several breakthroughs over the years. We are leaders in modeling the climate of Africa. IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's a UN body, a scientific body, that assesses the state of climate in the world from time to time every five, six years. The lead authors are actually those who write the reports. I was the lead author for the working group one for the assessment report six in the chapter 12. And the chapter 12 was uh, climate change information for regional impact and risk assessment 
for that chapter, I was leading the Africa section. The assessment report six was very, very, very challenging because of many, many gaps we encountered. But at the end of the day, I was really proud to be part of those who actually write one of the most comprehensive scientific report uh, in the world. We are also leaders in mathematical modeling of diagnostics for diseases like COVID. At the height of the COVID pandemic, we led the development of a highly efficient diagnostic approach that saved the government of Rwanda millions of US dollars in its response to the pandemic. In 2021, the savings accrued at the Kigali International Airport alone amounted to 7 million US dollars. Much more was saved at the National Laboratory of Rwanda. Professor Wilfred Ndifon's contributions during the COVID-19 pandemic were pivotal in understanding and combating the spread of the virus. Through his expertise in mathematical modeling, he played a crucial role in predicting the trajectory of the pandemic, informing public health policies and developing strategies to mitigate its impact. His innovative approaches shed light on the dynamics of virus transmission, the effectiveness of intervention such as vaccination and social distancing, and the emergence of new variants. Beyond COVID-19, Wilfred's work in mathematical modeling extends to various other areas, including infectious diseases, immunology, and population dynamics. His research not only advances our understanding of complex biological systems, but also provides invaluable insights for shaping public health strategies and improving human well-being. Rwanda is proud of its partnership with the African Institute for Mathematical Science, ENS. As part of this partnership, Rwanda hosts the AIMS Global Secretariat and one of its largest center for excellence, serving the whole African continent. In March 2016, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, chaired the launch of the AIMS Ecosystem of Innovation in Rwanda. The Rwandan government acted swiftly to combat the pandemic using science to protect public health. The Ministry of Health in Rwanda has collaborated closely with scientists, including Professor Wilfried Ndifon from AIMS. We believe that only the best is good enough for Africa, and we strive to develop the best young scientists in Africa. On average, our PhD program receives more than 50 applications for each available slot, demonstrating its relevance and attractiveness to Africa's youth. A total of 52 PhD students are currently enrolled in our PhD program. I'm working on the modeling socioeconomic uh, inequalities and its implication on public health. This involves different modeling, such as machine learning, and also taking some data, like satellite images and also other statistical data, to see if we can generate some insights that can help in decision making. So this research will guide decision makers across urban areas in Africa, which will uh, in the end contribute to the implementation of uh, sustainable development goals, not only in Rwanda, not only in Kigali city, but also in different African cities. I'm working on physics in farm machine learning with applications in climate science. Nowadays, we are facing a big issue, which is not just about our environment, but our health and future too. And it is air pollution in Africa. Our continent is growing fast with busy cities, new factories, and this growth is one of the major cause of air pollution in our continent. And this is a problem that we can no longer ignore. That is why I'm working on finding a solution to tackle this issue. And my project is focusing on how to accurately find a solution to identify source of air pollution using machine learning tools. Basically, how can we teach computers to help us to accurately find the exact location of air pollution sources based on the physics behind the transport of air pollutants in the atmosphere? 
By knowing the location of air pollution sources, this will help our institutions to adopt better policies and regulation in order to reduce emissions of air pollutants. This project is not just designed to have an impact on Kigali, but other African countries too. And it is not just about using innovative technologies, but also making sure that our environment is safe and clean for everyone. I'm working on pricing weather linked insurance derivatives for agricultural books, mainly supervised by Professor Olivier Menito Parment. When we say weather derivative, they are simply futures contracts or options on those contracts where the underlying commodity is a weather index. For example, it could be the total amount of rainfall within a specific period of time at a given place. One may ask what are the benefits or importance of working on this project. One is to ensure food security, especially in most African countries where farmers or most farmers are dependent on rain-fed agriculture. Extreme weather events can threaten the realization of food security. By allowing industries and businesses to transfer their risk, we give them the chance to hedge against these weather-related risks. Again, by ensuring or putting in place measures to adapt to climate changes, farmers and other climate-affected um, businesses can become more re resilient to climate change issues. In the case of AIMS, the model that we have been developing and that has shown to be successful so far is really a Pan-African approach but also an international approach. So each of our students have international supervision teams. And in this sense, it's not just about um, thinking the best way to educate and provide opportunities for, for the graduate students, but also embedding that into building a network of African data scientists and provide opportunities for um, African researchers to collaborate through the co-supervision of PhD students and I've been very impressed with the enthusiasm and also the level of the students that we were able to recruit. They have been already uh, presenting their work at international conferences, really achieved some amazing results. And it's been really amazing to see these students grow as part of their PhD journey and contribute to research capacity building in Africa. My research work is linking air pollution and cardiovascular diseases in Kigali City. It has been found that lack of air pollution data limits the contribution of researchers, especially on identifying its health effects. There is an air quality lab at EMS Research and Innovation Center where we keep materials for data collection. Before field work, time is spent in the lab preparing materials to be used like checking materials and filters packing. This monitoring campaign will significantly contribute to data availability and support research in addressing public health effects due to air pollution exposure as a current global burden. My work at EMS, I summarize it like climate modeling for improved decision making. We take advantage of 150 years of historical data that exists in Africa and then we try to detect climate extremes, or you call it climate hazards, that have occurred in the past. Try to attribute this, like to see whether this is due to natural variability or this is due to anthropogenic climate change. We use physical climate models, but we also use uh, mathematical models like machine learning, deep learning, AI. We construct very robust indices that can characterize the climate hazard we're interested in. For example, drought, floods, extreme heat, tropical cyclones, and other things. What we want to do ultimately is building climate change information for each country of Africa. The vision of AIMS is of a prosperous Africa propelled by innovative education and science. And science here refers not just to the conduct of science, per se, of fundamental science, but also applications of science to address the problems that communities across Africa face. And we do this by building partnerships across the public and private sectors, both nationally and internationally. These partnerships bring us closer to the communities that we serve, 
and they also give us access to technical and financial resources that would otherwise be unavailable. An example is a partnership that we recently formed with uh, a couple of ministries uh, in Rwanda, the Ministry of the Environment, the Ministry of Health, and uh, other stakeholders, including the UK Office of National Statistics. This partnership allows us to bring the tools of mathematics to bear on the important problem of addressing the health impacts of climate change. And we anticipate that this, the outcomes will help to improve the lives of people across Rwanda and beyond. The world is at a critical juncture in its history. We will either continue with business as usual and doom humanity to a possible eventual collapse or change course to protect our collective future. The paths that Africa decides to take to develop its scientific and technological enterprise will determine the fate of humanity. If Africa follows the same paths as the West, then humanity is likely doomed. However, if Africa follows the most sustainable paths where favored by aims, then the hopes of humanity's continued survival will improve. I invite you to join us in this momentous journey to shape our collective future. The, the center president, Professor Wilfred Ndifon, who was supposed to be here, but unfortunately because of the health issues, has not made it. So he mentioned at the end, join us. So this really corresponds to what he, uh, the AIM South Africa center president mentioned this morning, that uh, one, of the, one of the success, I mean, one of the things to measure the success of this gathering is to, to make sure that uh, we create new friends, create uh, collaborations, as well as inspirations. Therefore, on behalf of AIMS Research and Innovation Center, for those who want to create friends with us, create collaborations, the doors are open. I have here my, my colleague, uh, Vicky, so you can stand up. So whenever you see her, you can discuss with her. About her. But also, Josephu, if you can stand up. OK, so I do like this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, were, we were like officially started in 2023. But it does not mean that AIMS research started in 2023. If you recall the morning presentations, one of the presenters mentioned that the AIMS research started in 2008. So that's why you can see there are a lot of things that we have presented in our, in our video. We have a number of programs at AIMS Research and Innovation Center. We have the research, research chair program. We have postdoctoral program. We have uh, uh, AIMS doctor training program, we have women fellowship program, but also we have research uh, visitors program. So for those who want to spend their sabbaticals, you are welcome to our center. So I have prepared three problems that uh, we are tackling at the AIMS Research and Innovation Center. The first one is on health crisis and the disease burden, which corresponds to the SDG3, good health and uh, well-being. As you know, health crises are significantly cause of shocks and fragility. You so, I think you can uh, 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 accept this sentence by referring what happened during COVID-19. So a lot of things happened. There was a shock and a lot of countries had to revisit their health system and so on. We have seen there is increase of uh, frequency of health crises, for example, the Ebola, but also there are some of the areas in Africa that initially we didn't have the malaria, but nowadays we do have malaria. 
So, between 2001 to 2020, African recorded the number of 1,671 uh, health events. Among these, 90% of them were from the infectious disease. This disease in Africa were responsible for total loss of over 60 million. So now, what do we do at AIMS Research and Innovation Center? So we, we do have a number of programs that we are working on. The first one is MAMODI Africa program. So MAMODI Africa means Malaria Modeling Africa. So this is a billion and gate funded project that aims to train Africans to be mathematical uh, uh, modelers at master's level and at the PhD level. We also have a program called the Autism Program. So the idea of Autism Program is to uh, come up with the app that will help to detect the children with autism under 16 years of age. And we also have the COP Masters in Mathematical Epidemiology Program, which is coming soon. The second one is the climate uh, uh, crisis, which is linked by uh, with this SDG 13, that is climate actions. So we have noticed a lot of floods happening as well as uh, earthquake and so on. For example, in, in Rwanda, we had some floods in March and that caused uh, a lot of death. But also the waterborne disease accounted for 40% of climate related health emergency over the past two decades. So with this one, how do we solve at AIMS uh, Research and Innovation Center? So as you heard from the video, we do have a strong collaboration with the UK ONS program where at AIMS Research and Innovation Center, we work on five topics regarding this issue of climate and health. So the first one is the injury and the mortality from extreme weather events, particularly the flooding. The second one is the waterborne disease and related health effects. We have zoonotic disease. We have air pollution and respiratory illness. And the fifth one is a non-incommunicable disease. So these are the type of the research we are working to support the implementation of this health and, uh, and, and the climate, I mean climate and the health. So also we, we do have, as we saw in, from, from, from the presentation, we work on the climate modeling. Uh, we have people working on the atmospheric and the climate change. We are working on the wind energy, sustainable development, impact of climate change on specific regions. And uh, coming soon, we just secured the grant together with the Imperial College of London. So this is a six years grant that will be working on climate and the health from October 2024. So the last uh, issue is the shortage of qualified academic staff in African universities. So we have noticed oh, uh, that the number of universities in Africa is increasing, but the number of qualified staff uh, is still down. So for example, in East African universities, so they need addition of 35,000 lecturers to meet the student to teacher ratio. So how do we do that? How do we support to solve this problem at the AIMS Research Innovation Center? So we do have a doctor training program at, at Ames Research Innovation Center. And currently, we have 52 PhD uh, students who are enrolled. And among them, 40% uh, are women. Of course, we are not accredited to offer PhD. So we work with the partner institutions like University of Cape Town, Stonebush, and so on. However, good news is that we have started the process of accreditation. We have met the people responsible and they're hopeful that uh, perhaps next year we are going to start our own degree uh, program, PhD program. We also have postdoctoral fellowship programs, which currently we have seven fellowships, fellows, and uh, among these 43 are uh, women. So thank you very much. And uh, I have put purpose the email address because the center president of AIMS uh, South Africa said that uh, if we leave on Friday night, with new friends and the collaborations, we have succeeded. Therefore, we need the friends and the collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the speakers of this session. And we are now, we have now reached the end of our day one, 
And as I was sitting there hearing these stories, I felt like I was challenged. It seems with all this story, we are left with a mandate, all of us in this room. And I think when Ames was launched, people who were sitting in this room, they were given a mandate. And as I repeat, Professor Nurok said last night, there were so many special people who helped to expand AIMS activities. And this is the product that we saw this since this morning. Now, in the next 20 years, our students, you will be the one who will be sit standing here. What story are you going to tell? People will be sitting here. To our supporters, 20 years ago, some of you, you were not here. We have been given a mandate the next two decades. How do we visualize this? With all the opportunities that the centers, all the gaps, they have dreams. How are we going to make sure that they achieve those dreams? It's on us who are sitting here tonight.